the oracles of God television to get the eternal gospel of Jesus Christ right out of Africa. Okay, having said that this morning, let's look at how to use the word of his power, the word of his power, the word of his power. A lot of things are out of course. Wrong people in positions, wrong direction, all sorts of things happening. The word of his power is the solution. The word of his power. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1. God. I like it when verses start with God. Amen. Just like the book of Genesis. God. Hallelujah. God who at sunrise times and in diverse manners. Spoke in time past. In those days he spoke to the fathers by the prophet. In those days. In those days. He spoke to the fathers by the prophets. He's speaking to us now by his spirit. Amen. But he spoke to the fathers by his prophets. He has in these last days, somebody say last days, spoken unto us by his son. His son who he appointed the heir of all things and by whom also he made the worlds. Who being the brightness of God's glory and the convenient image of God's person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. Upholding all things by the word of his power. Upholding everything by the word of his power. Beloved, if you read that scripture and you're an English major, you want to correct God. Because you expect God to say that he upholds all things by the power of his word. But if you study the Bible very well and you keep going over it, verse after verse, scripture to scripture, you'll discover that God said exactly what he meant in the book of Hebrews. He didn't make a mistake when he said he upholds all things by the word of his power. Not the power of his word. Because ever before power existed, his word has been. Now the greatest challenge sometimes that we have is that we need to understand and appreciate. Because you will either use or misuse the word of his power. What makes the difference in the life of a believer is the day you begin to use the word of his power. Until you begin to use the word of his power, all things will be out of course. Praise the Lord. So briefly this morning we are going to be looking at the word of his power. In Isaiah chapter 55, from verse 8, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. The way I think, God says, the way I think is not the way you are thinking. And that's why the way I behave is different from the way you behave. The way I solve problems is different from the way you solve problems. Amen. He says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways. Higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Amen. And then he now goes on to say, So shall my word be. So shall my word be. Not so shall my power be. So shall my word be. That goes forth out of my mouth. It will not return to me void. It can be empty. It must bring back a good report. It will never return to me empty. Praise God. It will not return to me void, but it will accomplish that which I please, and it will prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. That's why the Bible will never tell you that God sent his power. He sends his word. Because of the word of his power. He upholds all things by the word of his power. Now, what do we mean that he upholds all things by the word of his power? And by the way, let me tell you one truth. 
One of the most terrible things that can happen anywhere is for anybody to tamper with the word of his power. That's why in Jeremiah, he tells them, Is not my word like a fire? Verse, chapter 23, verse 29. Isn't my word like a fire? Says the Lord. And like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. Therefore, behold, I'm against the prophet, says the Lord, that steal my words and every one from his neighbor. So we're talking about the use and the misuse of the word of his power. You see, there is a way to use the word of his power. There is a way to misuse the word of his power. To use the word of his power will bring peace to your life. Progress. Your life will prosper. You will stand out. You will be different. All by what? The word of his power power. You know, when some people want to help you, they want to help you with money. Some people want to help you with, you know, a gift of a car. Some people want to help you, well, you can give you a house. But you see, if God were to ask me any day, what do you want, Nadi? What do you want me to give to you? I would rather take the word of his power. Why? When a person who lacks understanding asks for help or is looking in directions, He's looking in directions he thinks according to the level of his thoughts, where his own solution is. But you see, the thoughts that are higher than your thoughts knows that there's something that upholds all things. And the secret of what upholds all things is the secret of the word of his power. Do you know you can be in church for 20, 30 years and not understand the secret of the word of his power? It's very easy to know. Sometimes, uh, oftentimes, believers find themselves in problems, find themselves in challenges. And you see that people will rather go to Egypt for help. Some people will rather run to an uncle first. Some people will think about it, think about it, and say, that my classmate is very rich. Oh, the governor is my friend. But let me tell you the truth. Whoever has known God... It becomes automatic that you find out that wherever there's a problem, there's ever a challenge, you find out that the first place they turn to is the word of his power. Then everything else can now fall into place. You know, it's very amusing that sometimes you hear people talking to each other and you say, um, somebody says, ah, I, I need your help. And you say, well, God help us. You say, no, 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 but God uses men to help. No, you have got it in the wrong order. Bible says, woe to him that goes to Egypt for help. Woe to him whose trust is a man. The moment anybody ignores the word of his power, and at any time you turn to anybody else or anything else to solve your problem, something happens, not only in the realm of the spirit, but also in the natural. I'm going to show you right now. Can we go? Hello? Praise the Lord. Now, what Jeremiah the prophet was saying is this. Some people know how to go and steal the word from God's mouth. Now, because he's a merciful God, a glorious God, a graceful God, there's an opportunity for if you want to manipulate. But there's also a consequence. Praise the Lord. So, what we're looking at this morning is, what is this word of his power? To understand it well, let us interrogate the book of Genesis thoroughly. And for us to investigate the book of Genesis, we better go to, to John chapter 1. Amen. To go to the beginning, Genesis, we better go to John chapter 1. The revelation that God gave to his apostle John. The Holy Spirit speaking through John is actually the book of Genesis. Why? It starts like this. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And that Word was God. Now, logic can never understand what you have just read. It's a spiritual thing. Hello. In the beginning was the word. Before there was a house, before there was a tree, before there was a man, before there was anything, there was the word. And the word was with God. But not only was the word with God, but that word was God. Look. There is no university in this world that can break that down. But it's so simple that his children can pick it up. All things were made by him. 
by God, by his word. All things we are made by his word, and without him, <laughs> spiritual things, without him was not anything made that was made. <laughs> without the word was not anything made that was made. Now he said something. In him was life, and that life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness could never understand light. You see, the word of his power is something that darkness can never understand. The word of his power. The word of his power. Amen. What I want you to begin to notice is this. If you go to the book of Genesis in chapter 1, you'll find out the Bible says, in the beginning, God. Because there was a before the beginning. That beginning you see is meant for you and I. It has nothing to do with God. Because God was there before the beginning. Or God is there before the beginning. Or God was there before the beginning. Or God are there before the beginning. You know, it came before language. So even language cannot capture what we are saying. It's a spiritual capture. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And then there was a problem, is what the Bible is telling you here. Some things happened. Amen. And the earth became without form and void. That's unlike God. God is not a void God. He said, my word, when I send, it never returns to me, what? Void. Yet the earth became void. Without form and void. So that's to tell you that there will always be challenges and problems. There are some things God does not even reveal to us because of the depth and the magnitude in which they were. Hello? But God is a God of order. And then there was a disorder. Now, when there was a disorder, what did God do? Did he run around? No. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. You see, the first thing that happens to you when you really belong to God is that the Spirit of God moves first. And that's why you find out that anything that you do, once the Spirit is wrong... The destination is predictable. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. Then what happened? The word of His power was loosed. And God said, What you are listening here to is, and the word of power went into action. In your life, the word of power will go into action. Yeah. Now, the word of power went into action. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. Now remember what John told us, that in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. That all things were created by the word. So what you, what you read, the revelation John gave us, is what you back up to Genesis to come and experience now. Is somebody flowing this morning? Now, what is God doing and why is he revealing this to you? He's showing you how you can succeed. He's showing you how to handle problems. He's showing you the way his own thoughts work. He's showing you the way his own solutions come. And the Spirit of God moved on the face of where the problem was. And immediately the word of power went into action. Let there be light. And there was light. You know what I like about the Bible? The Bible says, <laughs> and the light was good. God saw the light. It was good. Now, don't forget that the Bible says, and the, in him was life, and that life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and darkness could not comprehend. So, John was looking at the story of Genesis in a spiritual way. Who, which man was around when God created the heavens and the earth? Which journalist? Which newspaper? This is revelation knowledge. Blessed are you when you have revelation knowledge. Many prophets of old and many men wanted to hear these words, but they never had the opportunity to hear these words. So whoever you are, when you hear the word of life, the word of his power, you embrace it because it's one of those things that if you mishandle it, you will discover that spiritual things are very slippery. You will not be worthy. 
And when God counts you unworthy of the word of his power, you can sing like a canary and pray like a fish. It's not going to help anybody. Amen? Now, God saw the light, it was good, and divided the light from the darkness. Let me tell you what the Bible will not tell you, what the word of power doesn't bother to say. And you need to have revelation to know these things. God saw the light, and light was good. Then he separated darkness. Darkness was not good. The first thing God did was to define what is good and what is evil. You see, when God speaks about himself, sometimes theology knows more than God. <laughs> Amen. But as Africans, we've learned to look at spiritual signatures even before we interrogate scriptures. Amen. Now, if you go to um, Isaiah 45 from verse 5, God said, I'm the Lord. There's none else. Nobody like me. There's no God beside me. <laughs> he says, I girded thee. I'm the one that packaged you. That's what God is telling you now. God says, I, there's no God apart from me. I'm concerning you. I'm the one that packaged you. I guarded you. Now what is he saying to us? Even though you have not known me. Amen. There's no God beside me. I packaged you. Even though you have not really known me. It says that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I don't care. Travel anywhere in the world. Enter anywhere. You will discover that there is no one beside me, is what God is saying. Try any solution you like. Run helter skelter. When you finish somersaulting, when you finish running up and down, all your wahala, you will come back and bow down for the word of his power. This is what he say. That's why you see that God doesn't stress anybody. Hey, 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 carry on. The end of what you are doing is known to him before you start. But in his office as creator, the word of power did something to man different from everybody else. He gave man the power of choice. We'll come to that. Amen. Amen. I said the light was good. The darkness is evil. It's not of God. You now think to yourself, how did light appear? What is the difference between light and darkness? Who made light? Scientists can discuss all sorts of stories they like, but they still don't understand what is light. They say it, it travels at a speed. What is light? <laughs> then they go into poetry. You understand what I'm saying? Now he says, there is none else. I form the light. God said, I form the light. <laughs> and look at the next statement. And create darkness. Now, he now repeats what he has just said in another way. I form the light and I create darkness. I make peace and create evil. Huh? A theological person says, what are you saying? What are you saying? Excuse me. Better than he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways, your ways. And all those, your theology that you are using to bind yourself left, right, and center is your personal business because it was in the beginning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And it was that word that said, Let there be what? Light. And God saw the light and he looked at the light and said, This one is good. His silence on darkness should instruct you. That's why when Isaiah moved into the spirit, he looked and said, oh, God says, I form the light and create darkness. Block light and what you will have is darkness. You want to create darkness? Just block the light. So what God was saying from the beginning is that the moment they block the light, it's not good. Let darkness fall right now. Put chairs in this place and ask a man to walk from this end to that door. He will trip over chairs, he will knock his head into, into columns, break pots, destroy equipment. Look, why? Because he walks in darkness. That's why I said the saddest psalm in the Bible is Psalm 82. It said, they know not, neither do they understand. The whole world lies in darkness. 
There's chaos and disorder everywhere. The people who should carry the light have no clue that they are the ones who are in charge. But we shall know today in Jesus' name. I form the light and I create darkness. I make peace and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So when God tells you that, look, 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 look. I am almighty God. Some people always ask some questions and they say, where did evil come from? If God is good, where did evil come from? Story. Because you have laid philosophy upon philosophy. Because you don't think like him. He said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then the earth became null and void. Without shape and void. Tohu vabuhu. Amen. For the Greek people. <laughs> and the Spirit of God moved. And the next thing, he said, let there be light. And there was light. Then he separated light from darkness. Which means there's a property he now increased in light. It means that there was a time when the light and darkness could mingle. Then he separated it. So from now on, this is good. This one is not good. I'm going to show you something. Now, what do we learn from Genesis? From the word of his power. If you look at the created world, I was listening to some scientists the other day when they were explaining that the distance between the sun and the planet called Earth, they calculated the distance. They calculated the amount of power coming out of the sun. And then concluded that if you can just carry the Earth and push it a few, eh, a few, a few meters, if you have the power to carry this Earth, this planet Earth, just push it towards the sun a few meters. Everything will burn up instantly. Everything will be roasted instantly. And okay, you have the power not to push it towards the sun, but you have the power to push it away. Okay, try. Do you know, the scientists were pointing out that if you can just push the sun, push the planet, Earth, away from the sun, in not a few meters again, what do you think is going to happen? Everything will freeze up. So every morning you wake up, you see sun is shining. Hello. What you are seeing in action is a remembrance of the word of his power. <laughs> Glory to God. From the day he spoke it till now, the word of his power. Not the power of his word. The word of his power. From the day he spoke it till today, the sun wakes every morning and salutes the earth with sunshine. God does not wake up by 4 a.m. to tell the sun, get ready. The word of command, the word of power that was unleashed creation week is still working till now. Now, what am I trying to get across to you here? The word of his power created everything to be interconnected. If you are not calm, you will never understand this. Tell your neighbor, say, relax. Look, he created everything by the word of his power, and he created everything in such a way that all things are interconnected. But he has created a world in which there is light, and there is also darkness. There is good, there is also evil. So what does he do? He knows where he is going. Genesis chapter 2 verse 8. And the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also was in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I formed a light. And I create darkness. <laughs> Amen. He said, I'm the one who is responsible for good. And I'm the one responsible for the evil as well. I, the Lord, do these things. Forget your theologies. And I put it there for the purpose. It's your training school. Now let me tell you something. 
after he created the whole earth and everywhere like that, he now went into a part of the earth and created a garden. Now, why would he emphasize a garden? He was trying to teach you that, look, there will always be disorder. But out of chaos must come order. And the agent that must bring order out of chaos is nobody else but yours truly. Hello? Praise the Lord. So he created the garden. What is the difference between a garden? Now, some of the old school people here will know this because in those days they used to write, you know, they say, I pick up my golden pen upon my silver desk and decided to put across these few words of love. In the garden of love where no man is oppressed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let her write it. Amen. There used to be a book in those days. One man with Bentigo like this. With pipe in his mouth. You know the title of the book? How to write love letters. Praise God. If so, doxology. Ah, ah, so you are able to judge. Ah, old school. <laughs> this younger generation, they don't do anything. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, but the real love letter is the book of Genesis. So follow me here now. This is the garden where no man is oppressed. But in the midst of that garden too, a garden talks about order. I remember many, many years ago, when I was remembering that I trained as an architect, I would go to some estates. I used to enjoy going to look at estates in, at the stage when they're still constructing them, especially in America. I used to love to see how they lay the grasses, the lawns, flower beds, the order... And I would just be watching say, my God, this is lovely. This, look, you can't live in a house with a garden and compare to a home without a garden. Now, can you imagine when God is a gardener? So he put that garden there. He structured everything and showed man, look, there's going to be a ruliness out there. But use this place to train. Okay? Your children's children as they are coming. Do you know he discussed a lot with Adam? The one that even amuses me is when we talk about marriage. How important marriage was with God. Do you know he discussed with Adam a lot about marriage? We will be quoting it that for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. At the time God was talking, how many men were there? Only one. Go and check your Bible. But in the Garden of Eden, we are no man is oppressed. Hello. He was discussing all these issues with Adam. Adam was brilliant. He could name all animals and remember the names. No, so what are we saying about God? God who created man. Put him in the garden. I said, you are the one who is like me. You are the one who is going to be in charge here. And if you want to be like me, you must think the way I think. I'm going to show you the secret of how I think. I'm going to show you how I solve problems. I'm going to show you how I move. I'm going to show you why I'm successful. So that you too can be successful. Then he told Adam, he said, look, 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 look. Feel free, every animal, everything, eat. Behave yourself in the garden. Observe the order in the garden. Observe the interdependencies of everything. The way I work. The way I construct things. Hello? Now, the interconnectivity of everything in creation is obvious. The reason why we have a force of gravity is because anything you see that has mass influences all other masses. That's why every time you jump up, instead of floating, what happens? You come down. Who ordered it like that? Did you hear in the Garden of Eden that and while Adam was floating around, uh, and Eve was taken off, taken off like a jet? No. Gravity was in the Garden of Eden. Everything had its order. Everything has its course. Now, if you look at this picture very well, look at the way God does things. Each of those things are different. Every single human being in this place is different. The trajectory and the pattern and the course for each one is different. If you want to know the real meaning of success, it's for you to understand who you are created to be, what you are created to be, occupy the position where you are meant to be. Of what use is it for Jupiter to be envious of Saturn? 
The Creator created everybody, everything with your own peculiarity, your own success, your own path. If anybody else tries to copy your own, they will fail. Because they are not you. But hear me. Of all things God created, there's only one. He gave the option. When He created the earth, the stars, the sun, the moon, they have no option. The sun has no option. But to behave the way it behaves. Gravity has no option. Air has no option. Even animals have no option. Listen. Fish do not struggle to succeed. They don't struggle to swim. The creator who formed all things is a god of order. He formed them and says, stay inside the water. And you will do well inside the water. But he never gave them option that a fish will say, um, this water, I'm tired of it. Hello? I want to go to Lagos for a few weeks. I want to spend some time with, you know, some people on the land. What will you say to fish, that fish? Oh, fish. Oh, thou foolish fish. Not so. Now, do birds struggle to fly? Hello? You don't understand what I'm saying. There's an order in everything. Please, does water struggle to be wet? Does air struggle to flow? Now, what we, God is trying to teach all of us here is this. He, God, when he creates all things, he creates an order of success. And frankly speaking, success is not a struggle. Why? Everything that is surrendered to God's plan succeeds without stress. Everything surrendered to God's plan. Every created thing. Why? The creator has already mapped out the orbit. He has mapped out the progress. He's mapped out the end even before he starts the beginning. He said, I the Lord do all these things. Now, but of all things created, only one now that he looked at and said, you know what? I'm going to do your own program differently. You have to be like me. I'm going to give you a power now that you can use against me if you want. But I will still give you that power. I'm going to give to you a power now that is awesome because this power, even angels don't have this degree of this power. But I'm going to give it to you. And when I say you, Adam, I mean every human being that comes through you. Seven point something billion on the face of the earth. I'm going to give it to you. The power to either fall in line with what I have planned for you or to tell the word of power to do what? Get lost. You tell the word of power, I say, get lost. And when I give you this power, it's called the power of choice. It means if I, almighty God, separated you from everybody else, and I gave you the power to yes or no, to agree or disagree, I release that power to you. But take note that all your decisions will have consequences. Because everything that falls in line with my plan succeeds. They don't struggle. Look, the aeroplane made by men, for it to fly, do you see the size of the engine? Do you see the shape, the maintenance, anything goes wrong, what happens? Air crash. Look, how many engines did you see in the bird that is flying? <laughs> how many engines? Hello? You don't understand what I'm saying. So he said, you see, my thoughts are not your thoughts. So when you end up belonging to God, hello, you're going to discover something that we don't really want to agree with yet. <laughs> Everything created has its path, has its course, has its order, has its structure, has its way. You are the only one who is allowed to examine, think, discover, and decide, let me fall in or let me fall out. Let me fully obey or let me half obey. <laughs> you are the only one. You are the only one. And once you choose to disobey, actually, let me tell you the truth. 
the meaning of sin, you know, people, talk, it is religion that has, is not helping us at all in this life. Religion has hijacked the meaning of sin and calibrated it to suit itself. You know what sin really is? To miss the mark. What is it to miss the mark? Is to go in a direction that God didn't create for you. So sin is not just that, oh, I did wrong. No. The moment you don't do the right, it is sin. Even though you didn't do wrong. Hello? Let me give you an example. If God had ordained, just for example, I speak with foolishness, that you should be a carpenter and you decide to become a plumber, you will fail that we hear him. <laughs> <laughs> because where your success is, you have left the path. Now, the interesting thing about all these things is this. All these things start with what? The word of his power. I'm going to give you a secret now, as I round up. Hello? Any form of disorder that does not obey what you see in creation, that makes anything that God created to succeed, any form of disorder, is sin. And let me tell you something. The Bible says all unrighteousness is sin. That's in First John chapter, chapter 5, verse 17. But then the Bible tells you that there is a sin unto death. And there is a sin which is not unto death. Let me explain that. Listen to this carefully. You see, the word of power is alive today as from the first day it was released. So any day you wake up, you are aligned to the word of power, it will push you into the direction of success. Any day you wake up and you look at the word of power going in this direction, you decide to change the order, you decide to back it, you decide to shade it, you are off towards failure. It's sin. But there's a sin unto death. There's a way you will make a choice that is so, so, so against the word of power. That what they put in that garden, that they tell them there's a tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and once you eat that one, you are going to die. Listen, there's a sin unto death. Now the interesting thing about sin unto death, (laughs) I've wondered, the staff did not break, the rock did not crack, water still came out, Moses did not enter the promised land. You see, the things that we think are the things that annoy God, sometimes, are not the major things that annoy God. The things that can bring death, that a man will sentence himself to failure continuously, and pass the failure to his children, and pass that failure to his children's children, oftentimes are things that look so irrelevant. And the things that make for success, it's very annoying, this is I'm telling you about the word of, the word of power. Sometimes you will do an obedience for five minutes. It will bring blessings for 500 years. There are many people that happen to in the scriptures. Check it. Obedience of just three minutes. And all of a sudden, look, what did David do that God said, I will make sure that your children's children will always be on the throne. David said, God, I would like to build a house. God said, eh? So one human being can think of anybody else apart from themselves. Talk less about, think about me. Even though no house can contain me. But because you thought like this. Ah. He ran to the prophet. Say look, look, look. I want to build a house for God. Prophet said my friend go ahead. Then they called him back later. I said please. God said you can't build. Your hand is too busy with blood. We need peace. To build. You are a man of war. You know what? Don't build. Your children will build. Say, but because you even thought about it, you even thought about it, even though I'm not going to allow you. When David was about to die, he left money, specially, special fund for the building of God's house for his son. So, okay, by the time my son comes, he doesn't even need to worry. What he's going to use to, 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 to build the temple, I will have put aside more than about 80% of it. Now, why is it then that these things are not working for believers? We know that all unrighteousness is sin. 
But it's a sin that brings failure, that brings darkness, that brings death. And on a daily basis, many, unknowingly, even with good intention, move towards death when they wake up in the morning, after having said prayers. That's why I put on that board there a few things for you to see. Everything that God created has its own order. You will notice that in, 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 everything that God created has a form. That's why you can notice patterns. Everything that God created has its own structure. The structures are so consistent, you can predict many things. Everything that God created has a function. So it's able to perform consistently. Everything he has created has efficiency. And that's why you find out that all things work together. Just like in a car. You can't say, look, I don't care for tires. I only want carburetor. <laughs> then you can't have a car. <laughs> Hello? Is somebody hearing me? Everything is economical, which means it, you have never seen God waste energy before. Anything he, des- he designs. Do you know somebody said, computers of this world, one of the biggest problems with computers always has been how to cool the chips. Because of the processing speed. As it increases, temperature rises. So, even as we were making microchips, some people made billions designing how to keep them cool. And somebody now said, the amount of computation your brain does, if they were to make any computer that comes anything near what your brain is doing, you will need all the water in Babbage to be cooling that computer. (laughs) But you see that God in his own design makes it energy efficient, is aesthetically beautiful. Whatever God creates, He makes sure that not only are they connected, but there's goodness, there's beauty. Hello, who doesn't know the difference between beauty and ugliness? Instinctively here, who doesn't know? Except you're a jaded person. You do know you can listen to the rhythm of people's lives. Just like when you see the fish cutting through water. You know what I'm saying? Look at the grace. Have you seen a deer when it is in full flight? What of a leopard when it's on a hunt? You see beauty in motion. Have you seen a chimpanzee on a tree? A monkey? Good Lord. Or a giraffe with his long neck? Have you seen a butterfly flutter around in the wind? This is what I'm talking about is that once you surrender to what God created you to be, it takes out the stress. He's able to take you to the right place, right time, right word. It's not poisonous. It's rhythmic. Your love is not like a poison. Your life becomes an influence that something keeps coming out of you. Like one of the brothers who was on the training program yesterday, he was telling them that, look, he has been in the children's church for 14 years. In his church. Serving. Oh, does that mean he's not an executive where he is? He's an executive somewhere. But in helping people, to train people in the house of the Lord, to look after children, and he made a statement that I think was stripping, which was one that statement that... You know, children's church is even more powerful than adult church because of God's presence, because of the children, the angels, and all that. Faithfully staying at it, doing it, not as unto the church, not as unto the pastor, but as unto who? God. The rhythm of his life. It's beauty. All things are interconnected. The favor of the Lord will be upon him. You won't compare to somebody who serves in a haphazard manner today, looks at the things of God that way, has complaints left, right and center, refuses to surrender to the right spirit. Instead of the word of power to propel towards success, you find out that such persons on the face of the earth, he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways. Listen, let me round this up for you in a way that I'm sure that we'll, we'll, we'll be able to understand it. How do we get the word of his power to work in our life? Very simple. Matthew 6.33 Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Go on, next slide please. And all his righteousness. 
Amen. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his what? Righteousness. And all other things will be added unto you. What I like to say is this. Any area of my life when I'm seeing a discord, jangling, referent and sender, all I try to look for is that, Lord, where is the disconnect? Amen. Very easy. Where is the disconnect? Because anything that God puts together, he completes it. God will not give you a house. Look, before he brought Adam, he planted a garden. Put everything there. Put everything into place. And just in case he can be a failure, he made a suitable helper. Now, look at these products. Which one speaks of God? You are not hearing me. Which one speaks of God? Now, between the one brought up in this first house... And the one brought up here, which one? <laughs> this is not for you, because what you are seeing here is the product of choice. And you see, it multiplies as generations increase. And that's why, for anybody who lost their family, you be the first to say, No more discord in my family. I want to be the first one to line up with God's rhythm. The word of his power. Let me go for the word of his power. How? By seeking first his kingdom. It is in his kingdom that you find out that he's the God of order. He's the God of beauty. He's the God of structure. Oh, you know, I don't really like anything with structure. You love Satan. You are of darkness. See, but I've never thought to the level of structure. We understand. That's why you build houses like that. Now, do you know that th- this is the story of the lives of many believers? Why? Because when you ignore the word of his power, it's not the size of the house. The person who built this house, give him the same space, give him the same materials that this person used. You will see that because there is the word of his power behind the way he thinks, my thoughts are not your thoughts, that's why my ways are not your ways, you'll find out that the way we put that thing together will be different. Give the man who built that one all the materials for this. Do you think the result will be like this? My thoughts are not your thoughts. Next slide. It's not easy when you are brought up. On <laughs> Hello? Somebody says, I'm a child of God, I'm a child of God. The thing is, just by clapping in church and shouting, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. We, we can detect where there is no godliness whatsoever. Let's look at something as simple as shoes. <laughs> Flip flops, slippers. As simple as that. A man who is upheld. You see, when you do something that will line up with the order of the universe, it's acceptable to God. Now, the problem with some of these things is that they are toxic. They don't biodegrade. Everything that God makes is biodegrade. But you know what I like about it? The man who made this first... Sleepers keeps thinking of how to improve it until he produces one that when he's no longer using it and he throws it away, it will disintegrate into the earth without hurting the environment. Now, what do you think of the families that they are so brilliant that they need shoe and then decided to make a slippers out of uh, pure water and out of uh, plastic bottle and what? What? Can't you wear it? Can't you wear it? You can wear it too. Is this not somebody wearing it? <laughs> Look, whatever you don't realize is this. Many people going to church in Africa. They are, our lives are like this. Look, it doesn't matter your color. Even if an Oyibo person wears shoes like this, foolish. You are not like God because you don't think like God. You're not like God. You don't structure like God. You're not like God. You're not non-toxic. If anything, I learned from listening to Dr. Kolade, and that's the reason why I have a lot of friends like that, because I learned from them, because of the practicalization, not the theory of scriptures. There's a harmony in their lives. And because they fall in line with the harmony of God, the harmony that keeps the sun rising is the same power that will make sure that you are always on top. Praise the Lord. Look at the technology here. Are you not enjoying it? That's why when a child is brought up in this kind of environments, 
The parents have already set off the child in a wrong course of life. Collision course. You are like a Jupiter that said, I don't want to be here. I want to be where Saturn is. I want to replace the earth. Then you move out of the orbit that God put you and you become a nuisance to everybody. Banging one planet here, banging one over there, knocking the head of another one over there. A complete nuisance. Your destiny, unfulfilled. Your own frustration, full. And then, because we are all interconnected, it will not satisfy you to destroy your own harmony, but it will affect your children. The harmony of their own life, too, is off track, even before they were born. Now, the funny thing is that to correct all this is very easy. But remember what? Number one, everything has an order. Number two, disorder is evil, even in the cosmic universe. Disorder is destructive. It is evil. He upholds all things by the word of his what? Power. Word of his power. He will uphold your life. Well, that was his plan. You will surrender to it. All new things must be built based on the word of his power. He allows us. That's why he allows us to manufacture slippers, shoes, this and that and that. Somebody said, no, no, Pastor. I mean, look at the ingenuity. I think federal government should give that guy a scholarship. Scholarship to wear. So for that chaos and disorder, the comfort, the difference in comfort between these shoes tells you the value that each person puts on human life. The amount of thinking that goes into a thing. Do you think somebody who says, I've served in the choir for 15 years, or I've served in children's children for 15 years without complaining, without making anything, you think he didn't have opportunity to be offended? You think he doesn't have opportunity to find a cause to complain? You, you think the one that even amuses me the most is when you tell, call a Christian, I have some pastors who said, please go and do X, Y, and Z. They say, Pastor, there's no, ah, there's a terminology they use. We need the, we need the tools. We need the tools. The, you know, the pastor was telling me, he said, Pastor, there's no, uh, Pastor, you know, there are certain structures, you know that. Look, in the beginning, when you send a child of God to do something, he looks around him. He doesn't expect order, he expects chaos. And it looks as a surveying all around him. is knowing that by the time I stay where I am, everything around me will change into a garden. Why? Because you have the word of his what? Power. It's not by running around. It's not by struggling. You reject the word of his power. You line up with what the world is doing. Will not bring success. We will get there. God hates disorder. Number five. Number six. The word of his power hates disorder. What's number seven? Unleash the word of his power. Now, get ready. Because there's something I just want to say to you now. Where there's a sickness, the universe detects instantly that something is out of course. Do you know all things in the universe are connected? Everything created is connected. So when somebody says, how come it is, when somebody is sick, then somebody comes and prays, and the sickness has to go. Somebody else comes to pray, the sickness from headache turns to cancer. Why? Because without the word of his power, the universe cannot obey you. Why did Jesus succeed? Because he was the word of his power himself. And let me tell you something. Anywhere you release the word of his power, whether Jesus is the one that said it or you, it makes no difference. Why? If you say it in Nigeria here, and you stand on it, you stay consistent on it, you have the right spirit, anywhere from Russia to Uganda, the entire universe from outer space begins to rearrange itself because of what you spoke. So for many people who were born in a situation where this kind of slippers to school, it's not by struggling. It's not by being aggressive. It's not by having an inferiority complex that wants to copy everybody you think is superior to you. It's not by hiding all those complexes. It's by simply redefining yourself based on what? The word of his power. It was his word of his power that said all men are created equal. 
So that's why look at me today. I envy nobody. I would change not my life for anybody else's life. I'm doing what I want to do. Hello? I know I will not be here forever. I don't want to be here forever. I am surrendered to the fact that the word of his power has created a world here in which we all come for a season first. Then we all return to him. I'm prepared for it. I don't know what other people are thinking of. I don't know. I don't understand. Because this Bible contains the word of his power. And I'm also aware that one day there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. I'm probably going to be one of the people who are coming into the new earth. Because when he created man, he never created man for the heavens. He created man for the earth. The plan went off course. He has corrected it. But he's still coming back to his original plan. Which is that man was made for the earth. So people like us are still coming back. Why? I have seen the rhythm. I've seen the structure. I've seen the order of God's creation. I've seen what the word of his power upholds. A sickness is a disobedience to the word of his power. Whether it's from household enemies or a mosquito. You will watch the dawn break. You will watch the darkness disappear. You are not cursed. I said you are not cursed. That's why I can't be cursed. My children can't be cursed. Anybody making a mistake try to curse me ends up being cursed. I don't even have to do anything. All I have to do is to sit down. Listen, sin is sweet and enjoyable. But why do I fight and say, I don't want to sin? Every time you sin, it takes you out of the... They know not, neither do they understand. The foundations of the world are out of course. Have I not said that you are gods and sons of the Messiah? Your life becomes like that slippers. It's a matter of time. No, no. You see, because of the mercy of God, there's a delay so that we can repent and change and realign. Praise the Lord. So why do many believers fail? Ephesians 2, 10. I want, I'm going to read a few scriptures and somebody will tell me, what do you see? What instruction do you get here that can help us? For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2, 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Ephesians 4, 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfection of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith. Romans chapter 6 verse 4. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Praise the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Now, from all the scriptures I've said, what is the first common error all over the religious church that is blocking people from enjoying the word of his power? Does anybody have an idea? You said all the scriptures now. Huh? Huh? Don't look, at that, don't look at verse 13. Go, beyond, uh, go to uh, look at verse 12. Now we have received not the things, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us. Anybody notice? What is in this place that is what switches off, switches on the word of his power? And the moment you can see in all those scriptures, it switches off the word of his power. Let me go through it again. Ephesians 2.10 For we are his workmanship, created into Christ Jesus, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Ephesians 4.11.13 He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith. Romans 6.4 Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death. Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. 1 Corinthians 2.12 Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. What's the common thing? 
So, and it's obedience, but not quite like that. It's still more than that. There's something in there. There's a very active ingredient. Now, once you switch off that ingredient, the word of his power will not work for you. No, the spirit is consistent. It's not that. It's our own execution now, not the spirit. The yes. mind of Christ. Yes, the mind of Christ, but you have to apply it to bring out what can help us this morning. So that when we go... Our ability to choose is consistent, but we will choose right by God's grace, but that's not what triggers. Huh? When faith in God is okay, but that's not the issue. Yes. Uh-huh. One of the things I keep uh, from the scripture is like we uh, receive something that he, give, uh, he has given to no, us. No, 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 no. Because of time, let me tell you the answer now. Amen? Are we ready? Now, once you know this, you see, when God was highlighting this to me, it dawned on me that we easily presume that everybody knows some things. Because they are so simple. They are so simple, you presume everybody knows it. Hello? Now, not the power of his word, but the word of his power. To unleash the word of his power, you are going to need to understand that it is, he didn't say only you are his workmanship. We are his workmanship. We are his workmanship. He didn't say that when he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, and all that, that it's only you. He says, till we all come. In the unity of the faith. Till we all come. Romans 6, 4. Therefore, we are buried with him. We. We. The word of his power is crafted in such a way that you cannot become who you are meant to be. Except, I cannot become who I am meant to be until you become who you are meant to be. What you don't know is that in every church, as you fellowship together, there is a we that God is expecting. He's expecting the person in the first row to be looking forward to the person in the second row doing well. When we had a child that had no eyes, that was born without eyes, it was very easy because we had just begun to groom the church then. And we had groomed everybody into these things naturally. So the moment somebody had a baby and the baby did not have pupils, no eyes, without telling any announcement, the whole church was praying. We wanted to do well. We wanted him. We wanted the person's child to do well. We wanted, not like the one where you will find out that there is divisions, strifes, all the things that separate God will halt God, will stop God, and there are some people that is their own MSC. In churches, you pray them out. They'll keep bringing strife. There's, some, there's one person I know in particular. Once that person lands somewhere, within 15 minutes, he said, everybody was smiling before. Horrors break out. <laughs> Before you can track the thing to that person, people will have been fighting. There was a lady who used to be in our church many, many years ago. We used prayer to hem her on the right side, on the left, in front, behind. There are people like that. They carry a contrary spirit. After we used prayers to hem her on all sides, look, before you ask any question, she could recite almost the whole Bible. She had scriptures. But no word of his power. A divider to the core. Those whose ears are always ready to hear what happened to somebody else. Do you know that this lady one day even came and gave the church a gift. Say, Pastor, the Lord laid it on my, on my spirit. I say, I'm hearing you. Uh, I said, what is this? Oh, the key. Oh, it's a car. Oh, wonderful. I collected the key. The pastors were all happy around me. I told them, I said, take this car, go and pack it in Mrs. Adiola's house. Carry that key, lock it up, and keep it inside the safe. Nobody should drive that car. Nobody should move it anywhere. After about nine months, <laughs> God will help us to understand spiritual things. It doesn't matter where you start from. Trigger the word of life. Fit in into what God triggered for your life. Think of we. Stop thinking of yourself. When you do that, you do exactly what Satan did that caused war in the heavens. You don't care about anybody. My breakthrough, my this, my that. My, are there younger ones in the church that you are looking for? That how will this person marry? Oh, I have one cousin somewhere who will even like you. Do you think of anybody? The whole Nigerian church doesn't think of anybody apart from themselves. Like baboon. 
That lady, after giving the car, I left the car there for months. Almost a year. Then one man came one day and said, I'm the husband. Say, I understand that my wife gave a, a, a car to the church that is not her own. You see, I'm very sorry. I'm not here to, he was there to embarrass the church. I'm not here to embarrass you. I'm here, he was ready to pull trouble. And he was already calculating that this is how much we have to pay him for the car. The price he never paid to buy it. So while he was still going on venting and improving himself, and going after the same spirit that his wife was manifesting, disturb us of the church. I let him finish talking. I said, can you just sit down for a few minutes, sir? <laughs> he was there waiting that. You hear from my lawyer. <laughs> and I just said, I said, the car is outside, and that is the key. Ah, he looked at me. Not one more word will come from his mouth. He looked at me, looked at the key. Just took the key. With his tail in between his legs. Devil, devil, demonic tail between his legs. He just went and drove the car off. When the wife left our church, it was my duty. I sent somebody, and she moved to another city in Nigeria. I sent somebody who knew the pastor. Say said, something has entered your church. A quantity has entered your church. That you better pay attention. Of course, they didn't listen to what I was saying. But within six months, they had to have a meeting of all the church workers in the pastor's house to settle all quarrels. The kind of quarrels their church has never had before. A very powerful, popular church that was doing very well. This lady entered the church, come and see, bro, this one will fight that one, this one will fight this one, this one will fight this one. This one. By the time everybody came together, they traced the source of every quarrel. To who? That lady. I even warned the pastor. I said, when you have people like this, with this kind of spirits in them, be careful and pray. They are destructive. If you don't trigger the word of his power, they can look very busy, they can try and do all sorts of things, but the spirit they are going to be spreading. The pastor died not long after. That's why our job is not a job of play. It's not a job for jokes. And there are people who make light of spiritual things. We cannot make light of spiritual things. Because we know either the blessing or the devastation that can come out of it. The word of life will work for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The word of life will work for you. Amen. It will never work against you. So why are these things not working for Christians? Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 6. Having a readiness to revenge all disobedience. When? 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 Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, say, when your obedience is fulfilled. Let me answer your neighbor. Say, please mind your business. What of your own obedience? <laughs> you know, this is it. All over the church, everybody wants everybody else's obedience to be fulfilled. Mind your own business. You face your own obedience. As you continue to do it, somebody was asking me, say, Pastor, there are so many things we've seen you pull all over the world. How are you able to get this kind of results? We also are in Nigeria like you. I was just laughing. Look, whether you are in Lagos or you travel to London, you are in Washington, anywhere you are, the word of his power works. Just trigger the word of his power. Align yourself. People that other people will get there, they will close the doors. When they see you coming, they flick the doors open. The word of his power. We are the solution to Nigeria right now. This ministry has the word that will help this country. Right now. So we've had extra attention from negative forces. But listen, the light shines, darkness will never comprehend. Now let me finally give a note of warning to some of you who are business executives. If you think God cares about how many factories you build, without you upholding or being held by the word of his righteousness, you will discover too late that you wasted your life. You want to succeed, you want to do well, you cannot play corporate games with corporate people, corporate devils. The tricks they have, the things they do, the levels to which they can go, you can never go. They go for blood sacrifices. They do all sorts of stuff to just make sure they can get you. One of my friends was going for governorship in one state. So they decided to check whether he can, you know, he can handle these kind of things. 
So they just followed him one day and killed his driver. So don't be deceived. The people of darkness, who have chosen darkness, they have extremities to which they go that you can never go. What you need is the power. And there's no power without the word of his power. Just align to the word of his power and see the confidence with which you'll be able to pray. It was easier for me many years ago when we were grooming this church. When it was, you know, the beginning of Anthony. To focus on every person. We are praying for you. We are looking for how you do. We are spotting your this. We are looking for your good. It was transferring among the people. But what I just began to notice was as the church grew larger and larger and larger, all sorts of opposite human beings just began to gather. Those who have opinions that have known nothing and their nothingness, they manifest it all over the place. Because spiritual education is not a joke. It costs you something. You will be doing very well, all of you in this parish, if there is care one for another. Because all of a sudden, the word of his power begins to move. But a person who comes to the church, you, you are here for I, me, and myself, Trinity. You are not worried that there is a sister who is not yet married? She is looking depressed. You can't even call her and say, no, don't worry. In my case, it was worse. When I use anointing and I splash it over his picture, the man came to his senses and appeared. You go, go, go and do likewise. Hello? Tell your neighbor, you cannot be who you are meant to be. I cannot be who I'm meant to be without you. You think it's coincidence that God brought you? You are trying to walk magic. God doesn't believe in magic. He believes in miracles. Now, the older generation of people that we nurtured, took out our time, spent our lives, making sure the word of life was available in you. If you become a river that does not flow into others, shame on you. Why? Because the accounts were reflected. Spiritual accounts. For some of you who cannot serve, I, I had one fellow who was serving with me, always complaining. They said uh, Elijah followed, uh, Elijah always enjoyed from uh, Elijah. I'm not enjoying. I'm looking, I say, also, there was also Gehazi. Has it dawned on you that it is not even the person you are following that blesses you, but the God that you have? That the same word of power that propels him is the same word of power that will propel you. Let me tell everybody now in closing. This is why God created the whole universe on a sacrifice. The blood of the Lamb from the foundation of the world. And that's why those who understand spiritual sacrifices can always get to realign. You must have a dexterity and understanding of sacrifices. I will never forget people like Pastor Mrs. Adiola. I know when Mrs. Adiola joined the church. Look at her pastor today, full of the word, full of grace. Every time we would say, we want to have a crusade, we want to do this. Who would like to be the one? As a widow that time, she had a lot of court cases, challenges, and this and that and that. She told me later that she couldn't even give 10,000 naira towards these things at that time. So, but she kept saying, God, I want to be the one. Her heart was right. Her spirit was right. When we were going to buy land, she was the first person to give a million naira, a widow. Praise the Lord. Why? The spirit is right. You can't go wrong with God when your spirit is right. Forget all your English speaking. Forget all, all your eating, your Harvard, and all those things that you have. That's not what brings out success in life. It's the spirit that sponsors you. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Now, some people will start a bit, do it a bit, then they'll start step and wait. And then they want to continue where they started. No. The realm of the spirit doesn't work like that. Satan is busy. Even the one you had accrued before, in terms of spiritual credit, he's busy chipping it away. That's why once you start with God, you will ever be rising. You will ever be going forward. You will never stop. You will increase your sacrifices. Let me not lie to you. If you are here, God has blessed you with something. Look around you. There are people who need what God has put into you. Make sure you locate them, encourage them, speak to them. If you keep coming to church, everybody just poses and goes away. This is not the kingdom of God. The word of his power never created a rhythm like that. You are deceiving yourself. You will be exposed sooner or later. Praise the Lord.
I don't know why God didn't allow the man from South Africa to come this morning. Hello. But everybody say, I love my pastor. It's your business, oh. Whether you like, love me. Whether you like, don't love me. Let's stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet. You can also visit us online at www.lwuc.org or be our friend on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Living Waters Unlimited or follow us on Twitter at LWUC or at Oracles or you can watch us on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Living Waters Unlimited Church. We proclaim blessings on all our friends and partners for supporting this outreach.